Hi, everybody, and welcome again to Z Code Sports System. Here we developed automated systems to help you win big every time. It doesn't matter what sport you're betting on, we have all the tools for you right here. Before we get into some Major League Baseball action for May 22nd, I want to invite you to join so you will have access to the VIP Club section, which has all the tools to help you make your picks. So let's take a look at some of these games. There's a full slate of action for this Sunday as we are about a quarter of the way through the baseball season. Uh, we will take a look at six of these games. So we're going to scroll down and we will get started with the first game that we want to look at. Los Angeles Dodgers and the Philadelphia Phillies. The Dodgers come in burning hot. You can see that they have won five out of their last six games. The Philadelphia Phillies are average up. They have won their last game and they're four and two over their last six. Tony Gonsolin is scheduled to pitch for the Dodgers. He is 4-0 with a 1.64 ERA. And Zach Eflin is scheduled to pitch for the Phillies. He is 1-3 with a 3.90 ERA. If you notice the, the um, pitcher profit officer, you see this plus 110 in the green. That's for Tony Gonsolin. He is a much better bet than Zach Eflin, who is coming in at minus $146. If you look at the over-under, in the last four games, the Dodgers have been involved in games over the line, while the Phillies have been over in four out of the last six, but under in the last two. The score prediction has the Dodgers in an 8-0 blowout with a 55% level of confidence. On the power ranking indicator, you will also see here the Dodgers are at plus uh, 26, while the Phillies dropped considerably from plus 28. With their two-game losing streak, they dropped down to uh, plus 7. And then they did win the last game, but the two-game losing streak contributed to that downward trend. Um, the volatility officer, how stable have the two teams been? You can see that the Dodgers are at plus 11. The Phillies are at minus 5, meaning that the Phillies are not being consistent with regards to their favorite underdog status while the Dodgers are. While I do like the Dodgers to win this game, they are the better team, and they will have a little bit of revenge coming back to Philadelphia after the Phillies won three out of four in Los Angeles. I don't think an 8 nothing score is going to be accurate. That's too big of a, a margin. But I do like the Dodgers to win in a closer game going over the line. Mariners and the Red Sox. Tampa Bay, Baltimore. Next game we want to look at is down here a little bit further. Here we go. The Detroit Tigers and the Cleveland Guardians. Detroit comes in average status. You can see that they are 4-2 over their last six games, but they have lost their last two. Well, the Guardians are ice cold down. They are 2-4 and four over their last six games, and they have lost their last two. Bo Brisky is scheduled to pitch for the Tigers, while Tristan McKenzie is scheduled to pitch for Cleveland. See, Brisky is 0-3 with a 5.13 ERA. McKenzie is 2-3 with a better ERA of 2.97, but both are poor bets at minus 106 and minus $213. So don't base your pick on, on these two pitchers. They have both been poor bets. On the power ranking indicator, you see that Cleveland is at plus 8, and Detroit's at plus 15, and both on the downward trend because of their recent uh, losing skids. The score prediction has Detroit by a 6-3 edge, but notice the confidence in prediction is only 16%, so take this with a grain of salt. Come back closer to game time and see if that prediction and confidence level has changed. If you take a look at the over-under, Detroit has been over the games in two out of the last five, and Cleveland has been involved in games over in three out of the last six, so you know it's kind of like a toss-up for over-under. Um, that means I would probably avoid the over-under bet in this case. If you look at the volatility oscillator, the stability factor, you can see that Cleveland is, is uh, not as stable at plus 6 compared to plus 13 for Detroit. Detroit is more consistent with regard to their favorite underdog stats. I do like Cleveland at home by a few runs, but I would, again, avoid the over-under bet. Minnesota and Kansas City. In this AL Central battle, the Royals come in at burning hot. You can see they've won their last two ending a two-game losing streak and a three-out-of-four-game skid. While Minnesota's average up, they've won their last game, and they are 4-2 and two over their last six. Their win was a 14-4 blowout over Oakland. The pitching matchup has not yet be, been determined for this game. Um, if you notice the over-under, you can see that Minnesota has been involved in games over the line in three out of the last six, while Kansas City has been involved in games over the line in each of their last four. On the power ranking indicator, you can see that Minnesota on the downward trend, they are at plus 10. They were at plus 26 just a couple of days ago, while Kansas City has increased a little bit from plus 11 up to plus 17. 
In the stability factor, you can see that both teams have been very consistent with performing with regards to their favorite underdog status. Minnesota at plus 14, while Kansas City is at plus 10. The score prediction has Minnesota with a 5 nothing margin of win, with uh, only about 42% level of confidence, though. But I do like the Royals to win this one. I think they will win this one at home. I don't like the score prediction of 5 nothing in favor of Minnesota. I just don't see... Minnesota winning this one on the road. I do like Kansas City at home, but I like a lower scoring game going under the line. Texas and Houston. Washington and Milwaukee. Here's another one we want to look at. Milwaukee enter plays average up. And you can see that they are 4-2 and two over the last six games, coming off a 7-6 win over Atlanta. While Washington is ice cold up, they are 2-4 and four over the last six games. Aaron Sanchez is scheduled to pitch for uh, Washington, and Freddy Peralta is scheduled to pitch for Milwaukee. If you see here, they're both in the green on the pitcher profit oscillator, plus 167 and plus 103. So they have both been very good bets. And Sanchez has been a good bet despite being only 2-3 and three of the 7.94 ERA. Peralta is 3-1 and one with a 3.53 ERA. If you look at the power rankings indicator, you can see Milwaukee was at plus 23, and they dropped considerably down to plus 6. While Washington is also low, they are only at plus 3. The score prediction has Milwaukee by an 8-6 to six margin with 67.6% confidence in prediction. It's looking like a higher scoring game if this holds, if this prediction holds. And you can see that teams have been involved in games over the line in a combined 7 out of their last 12, so slightly more than 50% of the games over the line in recent play. The volatility oscillator shows both teams have been very stable, consistent at plus 10 apiece. I think the Brewers are going to win this one at home. I do like this one to be kind of like a uh, high-scoring shootout type of game. I like them by about two or three runs in a game going over the line. The next game we want to look at is the San Diego Padres and the San Francisco Giants. In this NLS battle, you see that both teams are average down at the moment. The Padres have won three out of their last six, coming off of a 3 0 loss to Philadelphia. And the Giants are 3 and 3 over their last six. They are coming off of a 5 3 loss to Colorado. Neither team has named their starting pitcher yet for this game. If you look at the over under, you can see San Diego has been involved in games over four out of their last six, but under in their last two. San, uh, San Francisco, four out of their last six as well. This could be an indication of a higher scoring game. And the score prediction kind of indicates that too. 7-6 to six in favor of uh, San Francisco with 52% level of confidence. On the power ranking indicator, you can see that both teams on the upward trend. San Diego particularly, they were at plus 5. Now they're at plus 23. While San Francisco is at plus 24. It's a very evenly matched game between these two NL West teams. The volatility oscillator showed both teams have also been very consistent. Plus 10 for San Diego, plus 8 for San Francisco. The Giants are at home. Really, that's probably the only reason why I'm going for the Giants. They are at home because the teams are really very evenly matched. So I like the Giants at home. I'm liking a higher scoring game going over the line. And don't be surprised if this, this game goes into extra innings. The last game we want to look at is the Oakland Athletics and the Los Angeles Angels. Both teams are coming in playing poor. Uh, you see ice cold down for both teams. Oakland is only two and four over their last six. The Angels are two and four over, over their last six and have just coming off of a three game losing streak against Texas. Neither team had mentioned their starting pitcher yet, so we don't, don't know who's going to start yet for this, this game. But what we do know is that as far as the over under goes, Oakland has been involved in games over the line in three out of their last five, and Los Angeles in four out of their last five. Good indication that this could game, game could go over the line as well. The score prediction depends what the line is. We don't know what the total line is yet. Right now, 6-3 to three in favor of Los Angeles with about 85% level of confidence. That's a high level of confidence, though. What we're going to look at now is the power ranking indicator, and you see that the Angels were at plus 28, and they have dipped down to plus 14, while Oakland is at plus 3, and they are now at plus 12. You see how stable the two teams have been. Uh, you can see here, the Angels were pretty stable, right? They were up to plus 4. They dipped over the last couple of days, just down to plus 1, while Oakland has been basically trending in an upward direction, a little bit of down here and there, but basically an upward trend. 
at plus seven. They have been more stable, more consistent. I do think that uh, the Angels at home is the better bet, but I would avoid the over or underline at this time. And again, I like the Angels at home by about two runs, but avoid the over or under bet. So there you have it. Those are the games in Major League Baseball for May 22nd. Happy betting, and we will see you again next time.